You know when you walk into a room and you forget why you walked in and like you have no idea what's going on or why you're there? Yeah, okay, I remembered. It's come back. Hello, welcome. So, um, so we have, I've got two videos up now on percent composition. There's two different ways to find percent composition. We used one by when we had a formula and we just used molar masses and found the percent composition. The second way we did it is we had some masses of elements in a compound. They weren't the molar masses, they were just how much of that sample was this element and this element. We were able to use that to find a percent composition. And those are the two ways to find percent composition. But what if we wanted to go backwards? What if we were given a percent composition and we wanted to find the formula for the compound? That is going to require a few different steps. I have written those steps over here. Now, there are a few things on the board that you should be confused by. So I want you to scout those out while we are looking at this problem. So let's walk through how we would find a formula from being given a percent composition. So here's a question. A compound has a percent composition of 74.83% carbon and 25.17% hydrogen. It's like three quarters carbon, one quarter hydrogen. By mass, by the way, by mass. What is the formula of this compound? So we're trying to find the formula. Now remember a formula is just showing how many of each atom are in a compound. We've been writing formulas this whole time. Ionic formulas we call um, formula units. Covalent ones we call molecules. So this is what we've been trying to do this whole time. So we're trying to find the formula. Um, here are your steps. I've listed the steps for you. And these are in your notes. They're in a slightly different place. You might find them around. Uh, you can direct yourself there. But if you just want to write them down from here, this is a good way to look at these steps as well. The zeroth step, aka the first thing you should make sure you do before you even start solving this problem, is find the percent composition, that's what percent means, for all the elements. So I know my compound has some elements in it. The formula will be some elements. I need to make sure I know what all of those percent compositions are. How do you check that, you might ask? Let's make sure our percent compositions add up to 100%. 74.83 25.17, yeah, that's 100%. That means I know my formula is going to be C something, H something. So I know my formula has some carbon and some hydrogen in it. By mass, 74% of it is carbon. By mass, 25% is hydrogen. So I know it's going to be C something, H something, with most of the mass coming from carbon and less of the mass coming from hydrogen. That's our first step, or our zeroth step. Now, before we start calculating our answer, let's think about this. Let's try to actually conceptualize what this might mean. I've got a compound of 75% carbon and 25% hydrogen. It's CH. It's got some carbon and some hydrogen. I don't know how many of those atoms there are yet. I don't know how many, but I know they're masses. Look at your periodic table and look at the mass of carbon. Carbon's mass is, I'm going to simplify here just for the sake of this illustration while we're thinking about it, make it easy for us to think about it. Carbon has a mass of about 12 atomic mass units, okay? Hydrogen has a mass of about one atomic mass unit. However, even though hydrogen weighs a lot less, it's contributing up to 25% of the mass. Now, if you just compare carbon and hydrogen, let's take the simplest example. Let's say my formula is CH. If my formula is CH, one atom of carbon and one atom of hydrogen, that doesn't match this percent composition, and I'll tell you why. 12 plus 1 is 13. The percent of carbon in this compound would be something like, and again, I'm using round numbers here, the mass of carbon over mass of the whole thing times 100%. Well, that gives me something really high. That's something like 90%, 92%. Yeah, 92%. That doesn't make sense. And it doesn't make sense because carbon weighs so much. So in order to get hydrogen's percentage up or carbon's percentage down, we're gonna need some more hydrogens. Maybe my formula is CH2. So let's check that. Just, I mean, again, we're not solving yet, we're just thinking about it. Carbon is still 12. 
But now the whole thing weighs about 14. 12 plus 1 plus 1. 12 over 14 times 100%. And now this is getting a little closer, but it's still off. I've got 86% now. And you can see we're narrowing in on this number here, the 74. We're getting closer to it. And in fact, if you did this a few times, you could probably find it by using this method. But this is not going to be easy for a lot of these compounds. And we're going to do a very systematic way with these rules in a second. But I just want you to think about what this means. Because hydrogen is so light, in order to get it up to 25% of the mass, we're going to need more hydrogens than carbons. If we had more carbons than hydrogens, carbon would be dominating this mass. You can see how I've got way more carbon, or I guess I have equal number of carbon, and it's still 92%. Even double the hydrogens, carbon's still at 86%. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about these conceptually. It can be very easy once you get the hang of these problems to just chug out the steps every single time, and usually you'll get the right answer. But it can help to think about what's going on here. So I've got some carbons and some hydrogens in my formula, and I've probably got more hydrogens than carbons just because hydrogen weighs so little. So that's our preface. We've got our percents. We know generally what our formula is going to look like, something with C and H. And now we're ready to begin. Step number one, change your units of percentages to grams. Now what kind of voodoo magic is this? 74.83 grams of carbon? 25.17 grams of hydrogen? Grams? Where did this come from? Why is this percent just magically changing to grams? Well, think about it. I don't know how much I have. I don't know hardly anything. All I know is the percent composition. Um, and I know it's got carbon and hydrogen in it. So let us make an assumption. If this is 74.83% per, sorry, 74.83% carbon, let's assume, say for example, I had 100 grams. Just making up a number. Say I had 100 grams of the compound. What mass of it would be carbon? Well, it'd be 74.83% of 100, which is 74.83 grams. How much of it would be hydrogen? Well, it'd be 25% of 100 grams, or 25 grams. And that's the assumption we make, and we're allowed to do that, because it doesn't matter that I picked 100 grams. What if it were 10 grams? Well, it'd be 74% of 10 grams, which would be 7.483 grams, and 25% of 10 grams would be hydrogen, which would be 2.517 grams. So you can see it doesn't matter what mass I pick, because it doesn't matter what mass I have. Because percent composition is an intensive property of a compound. The percent composition, the ratios of elements, doesn't change no matter how much I have. Say, for example, it was CH2. It's not, but say it were. If I had CH2, if I had one molecule of it, I'd have twice as many hydrogen atoms as carbon atoms. If I had a million atoms or molecules of CH2, if I had a million molecules of CH2, I'd have twice as many hydrogen as carbon. If I had 87 million kilograms of CH2, which isn't a real thing, by the way, if I had that much of it, I'd still have twice as many hydrogens as carbons because that ratio is fixed. So the first step is really just kind of helping us get towards actually being able to solve this. We're assuming we have 100 grams, and that means these percentages really represent the masses of these compounds. 74.83 grams and 25.17 grams. Again, conceptually, that is what's going on. But if you just get into the groove of this step, you'll just write those percentages as grams. Step one, change the units to grams. Boom, boom, done. So thinking about it the first time and a few times after that is good. But in practicality, this is all we have to do. The reason we get it to grams is so we can do step two. Step two, Use molar mass to find moles. So let's think about why we want to do this as well. Let me go ahead and do it for you. So the, what I'm talking about is we want to convert grams of carbon to moles of carbon. We can use the molar mass to do this. Carbon's molar mass is 12.01 grams per mole. And then hydrogen's molar mass is 1.01 grams per mole. Now, I'm just going to look that out real quick because I didn't do my math ahead of time. 
Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, so we get 6.23, uh, 231 moles of carbon, and we get 24.92 moles of hydrogen. Interesting. So let's do two things. Let's see what we now have, what it means, and let's see why that would be helpful. So what we have now is we've taken these masses of carbon in our imaginary 100 gram sample, and we've said that this mass of carbon and hydrogen represents this many moles of carbon and hydrogen. And we've done that calculation many times, but remember what it means. We're switching from two different ways to measure things. We're switching from weight or mass to a number, counting. We have six times 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon. And we have 24 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of hydrogen. So now we've switched to how much the thing weighs to how many of the things there are. Now think about why this would be helpful. That's what we're trying to find. Literally, my formula is just telling me how many atoms I have. Now that I have amounts instead of masses, this is able to tell us how many of each atom I have in the compound. I have six times six trillion trillion atoms of carbon and 24 times six trillion trillion atoms of hydrogen. That's why step two is helpful. We get to go to an amount. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that. What did I say? Six times six trillion trillion? So that means it's going to be something like six, 36 trillion trillion that many carbons, something like that. And then hydrogen is 24 times 6 trillion trillion. What is that? Uh, so something like 150, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, something like this. This many hydrogen atoms. So boom, there we go. We have the formula of my compound. Uh, that, wait, that doesn't, make, that doesn't make any sense. Something's not right about that. Here's what's not right about that. What we have are literally in this sample, our imaginary 100 gram sample, how many of these atoms there are. But that doesn't reflect the ratio. A formula is just a ratio. It's the ratio of atoms of one type to the other. So we don't need the number of atoms, we want the ratio. And there we get to step three. We divide to get a something to one ratio. Now here's what I mean by that. Let me throw up a balanced equation. Hold on, hang with me. Don't, don't let me lose you. I'm just throwing up a balanced equation right here. It has nothing to do with this. This is a balanced equation. N2 plus 3H2 yields 2NH3. What we've done here is shown the ratio of molecules in a balanced equation. So we have one of these, three of these, and two of these. The reason we have it written this way, as opposed to something like this, two, six, and four, is because the other way shows us the lowest ratio. It's like a recipe. It's saying I need one of these for three of these. So instead of two to six, or 200 to 600 to 400, which are all the correct ratio, it's best to show it in the lowest whole number ratio, which is kind of what molecules do anyway what these formulas are doing. So that's why we're going to find the lowest ratio. Now, when we've done this before, we kind of are looking for a something to one. Remember N2 here had a one in front. So the way we're going to find that something to one ratio is to divide all the numbers we got, this one and this one, by the smallest number. And let me show you why that works. So 6.231 was my smaller number of these. So we want to divide both of these numbers by 6.231. 6.231. If you want to be technical about it, we're dividing by 6.231 moles. So that way you can see your units have all been canceling this entire time. And then my moles cancel with moles. Let's go ahead and work out that calculation. 6.231 divided by 6.231. Well, obviously, that's 1. My units went away, so I've got one carbon. 
Hmm, okay. Well, let's do this one next. 24.92 divided by 6.231. I get this. 3.999. Hmm, 3.999. My moles have canceled. I'm left with hydrogen. Okay, now what have we been trying to do? Remember, we're trying to get that ratio of carbon to hydrogen. We did that by trying to find a something to one ratio. Well, this is what this is telling me. If I have one carbon, that means I should have 3.999 hydrogens. Or, since we've been doing some rounding, and since we technically only have three sig figs here, we can round this number to be pretty close to that whole number that it looks like it should be. So this is pretty much four hydrogens. And now we can see it. Can you see it? It's the ratio of carbon atoms to hydrogen atoms. Six moles to 24 moles is the same as a one to four ratio of atoms in the compound. And we've just discovered the formula for this compound. One carbon and four hydrogens. Or the formula C1, from the ones are implied, H4. That is the formula for this compound. We found it by doing these steps, by converting our percentages to mass, putting our mass into moles, then dividing to get a ratio of atoms in the compound. And that gave me the formula, which is, by the way, by definition, a ratio of atoms in a compound. That's how we do it. Cool. The end, but I'm going to do another example. So if you're good and you don't want to watch me go through another example, it's going to be a little quicker then that's fine. How long have we been going? About 20 minutes, feels like? 17, okay. So yeah, a longer video, but I wanted to make sure we understood why we're doing this without just like doing math for no reason. Because doing math for no reason is no bueno. It's important to understand what we're doing. So I'm gonna leave those steps there. And then I'm gonna show you another type of this question. It's gonna be a little bit trickier, but I'm gonna do it a little bit faster now that we understand why we're doing what we're doing. And these markers don't erase super great. Okay. So here's my question. I have a compound that is made of sodium. A compound contains only sodium, carbon, and oxygen. And I know that the percent of oxygen is 45.29%. And I know the percent of carbon is 11.33%. And we want to find the formula. this compound. Okay, so here's the question, and this is all I have to give you. So we have a compound that only contains sodium, carbon, and oxygen. So right off the bat, and I listed them in that order for a reason, because it's kind of a little hint, I need to have some amount of sodium, some amount of carbon, and some amount of oxygen. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that formula. I want to figure out what those question marks are. So let's follow our steps. First thing we need to do is to make sure our percent composition is complete. So obviously I'm missing an element here. I have oxygen and carbon, but I don't have sodium. But since I know that it's only sodium, carbon, and oxygen, all of those percentages should add up to 100%. So I can simply do this. The percent of sodium equals 100 minus... 45.29% of oxygen minus 11.33. I know the answer. I know the answer. I've written it down. So it should be 43.38% percent sodium. And you can check that by seeing that this plus this plus this should add up to 100%. 43, 45. Yeah, that should add up to, yeah, 100%. So now I've got my percent composition. That much sodium, that much carbon, that much oxygen. 
swell. Step one, because that was step zero. Step one, change our percentages to grams. Remember, this is just helpful so that we can do math with them. So we're going to take my 45.29%. I'm going to start as 45.29 grams of oxygen. I have 11.33 grams of carbon. And I have 43.38 grams of sodium. Now, I like to do them like one step at a time, kind of like this. But if you wanted to do all of these steps for one element until you got to moles, that's fine too. I just like doing them in this order, the way this, like doing all the steps all at once. Um, so yeah, for every element all at once. Okay, so we've got grams now, which remember that we're imagining this is a 100 gram sample because it doesn't matter how much we have, the formula ratio is going to be the same no matter what. So we got grams. Step two is to use molar mass to get to moles. Okay, so 16.00 grams per one mole of oxygen. We've got 12.01 grams per one mole of carbon. And we've got uh, 22.99 grams per one mole of sodium. I should have worked this out earlier and I definitely didn't. So we'll have 2.83661 moles. Uh oh. We'll have 90, zero, sorry, 0 0.9434 sig figs moles of carbon. It's worth mentioning that sig figs matter a little less on these types of problems. The reason why, I'll show you in a sec. And then, it's 1.887 moles of sodium. Cool. So remember what we've done here. We've switched from measuring by weight, by mass, to measuring by number, by ratios. And that's the last thing we're going to do. We're going to divide to get a something to one ratio. And we'll do that by dividing by the smallest number. Our smallest number here is this 0.9 number, 0.943 moles of carbon. Notice what that means before we even do anything. That means I have the fewest number of carbon atoms the second lowest number of sodium atoms, and I have the most oxygen atoms in this compound. So it's gonna be more oxygen atoms, a few less sodium atoms, and the least amount of carbon atoms. Looking at our percent composition, that kind of makes sense. Now oxygen and sodium, and we're thinking through this, we're kind of processing. We have some math to do, and obviously we can do the math, we can go right into it, but let's think about it first. Let's make sure this kind of makes sense to us. Sodium and oxygen have similar percents by mass, but if you look at their mass on the periodic table, you'll see that sodium is 22.99 grams per mole, but oxygen is only 16. So even though my percent of sodium is higher, it weighs more. So I'm gonna need more oxygen atoms to get the same percent as sodium. It's like having those carbon and hydrogens we were comparing earlier. I need more of these lighter things to be the same percent by mass as the heavy thing. Think about my bag, I'm not gonna even get it, but it's over there. If I had the same amount of mass of guitar as I did coffee beans, I'd need a heck of a lot of coffee beans in my bag in order to match the weight of that guitar. So since oxygen weighs less, we'll need more of them. And so that's why it follows that I'm gonna have more moles of oxygen or more atoms of oxygen compared to the number of atoms of sodium. Okay, so just thinking through that. Also, carbon weighs the less and it has the less, so that kind of matches it as well. So last step is we need to divide by the smallest number of moles, and that is 0.9. Sorry, last thing. The astute among you might notice the pattern here. You can kind of see where this is going, and you're always welcome to try to estimate that. See that nine, and that one eight, and that two, seven, two eight? Hmm? You can kind of see where this is going, right? We should get a really nice ratio. 9434 four moles divide by 9434 moles. And so notice we do this to every single one, even the lowest one. Because remember, the goal is to get a one to something ratio. So here's my one. I have one carbon, and that's going to be the standard for all of these other atoms. This one 
Uh, you can do the math in your calculator, but pretty sure that's going to be close enough to 2, 2 sodium. This one, you can do the math in your calculator as well, but I'm pretty confident this is going to be close enough to 3 oxygens. In fact, let me just check that for you. 2.831 divided by 0.9434. Yeah, I got 3.0008. That's 3. This is why sig figs don't matter as much, because this step is a kind of rounding. We're rounding here, because we need to have whole numbers to put in this formula. So here we have, oh my gosh, a ratio of carbon to sodium to oxygen. And maybe you expected this from the beginning if you're familiar with your ionic compounds. We have two sodiums, so I'll fill this in here. We have two sodiums. We have one carbon. We have three oxygens. And this makes the formula that you recognize as sodium carbonate. So this is what we had. We had sodium carbonate. This was the percent composition of sodium carbonate. And we use these steps to find the formula for sodium carbonate. Okay, so that was a long video. Um, what, 25 now? Feels like 25. 26 minutes. Cool. So a 26 minute video. Um, obviously, there were some things that I didn't address. For example, why do I put an asterisk by formula? And what is this step for? This mysterious one that I haven't mentioned yet. And it's just question mark, question mark, question mark. So it's because I haven't told you the whole story. For more on that, you need to watch the next video which will be the last one.